Hello, my name is John. I'm 37 years old and I work as a school teacher in San Francisco. I live with my wife, Emily, to whom I've been married for 10 years. We don't have children, although we've discussed the topic several times. Emily works as a manager in a large company and is constantly staying late at work. My relationship with my mother-in-law has always been complicated. Carol, Emily's mother, is a domineering and strict woman. She disliked me from the beginning considering me unworthy of her daughter. Carol often criticized my teaching profession, implying that I don't earn enough. A couple of months ago, I received an offer to teach online courses for high school students in literature. It was a good opportunity to earn extra money, but I needed help to conduct the classes. Emily was too busy with work. Then I remembered that Carol used to work as a librarian and knows literature quite well. Without much thought, I decided to ask her to help me with the courses. Carol, could you spare a couple of hours a week to help with online lessons? You know literature so well, your experience would be very valuable, I asked my mother-in-law over the phone. Hmm, I don't know, John. I don't have much free time, she replied dryly. Please, Carol, I would be very grateful. It would make Emily happy, too, that we're spending more time together. Well, all right, let's try. I hope you'll listen to me, the mother-in-law said sternly. And so we began preparing for lessons together with Carol. At first, it was difficult to find common ground. Carol constantly argued with me on every issue and imposed her opinion. But gradually, spending a lot of time together, we began to understand each other better. The online courses started, and Carol and I were fully immersed in work. Several times a week, we would stay late at my house, preparing materials, discussing students and their progress. Carol turned out to be not only competent, but also very enthusiastic. For the first time, I saw how much pleasure and interest she took in our shared work. Gradually, our communication went beyond work topics. Carol began to talk about her life, about how difficult it was for her to raise her daughter alone. She divorced her husband when Emily was still little. You know, John, I've always dreamed of teaching ever since my college years, Carol confessed one day. But circumstances turned out differently. I'm glad that now I can do what I love, even if it's as your assistant. I was surprised by these revelations. Carol had never been so open and friendly with me before. I felt sorry for her on a human level. I suddenly saw her not as a strict mother-in-law, but as a lonely, tired woman who lacks emotional warmth. Our conversations became more personal and confidential. Carol complained that her daughter had completely forgotten about her immersed in work and career. And I, in turn, shared my concerns that my wife and I were growing apart, living like roommates. During one of these conversations, Carol covered my hand with hers and looked into my eyes sympathetically. I felt something flutter inside. For the first time, I noticed that Carol, despite her age, is a very attractive woman. I felt ashamed of these thoughts. Meanwhile, Emily began to suspect something. What's going on with you and my mom? she inquired. You both seem too happy lately. Nothing special, dear. We're just working together, so we've become a bit closer, I tried to explain. But deep down, I understood that I was being drawn to Carol more and more. And it wasn't just about work. With her, I felt something that had been missing in my relationship with my wife for a long time. Passion, excitement, thrill. Carol seemed to have become younger and more beautiful in my eyes. I wanted to see her more often, hear her voice, inhale the scent of her perfume, but I tried to suppress these thoughts and appear impassive. It was Friday evening. We had just finished another online session with the students. Emily was staying late at work again. Carol and I were sitting on the couch with glasses of wine, discussing plans for the next week. At some point, our eyes met, and I felt a spark between us. Carol moved closer to me, covered my hand with hers, and looked into my eyes. My heart started racing wildly. I was overcome with a mad desire to kiss her. I tried to pull myself together, to look away, but it was in vain. Carol was attracting me like a magnet. John, she said quietly and hoarsely, caressing my cheek. I've wanted this for so long. The next moment, our lips met in a passionate, unrestrained kiss. Reality receded, leaving only all-consuming emotions and intoxicating passion. We gave ourselves entirely to the overwhelming feelings, forgetting about everything in the world. Carol became my guide to a new world of stunning sensations. I dissolved in her tenderness, losing my will and reason. 
Then we lay on the disheveled bed, coming to our senses after what had happened. Carol pressed against me and whispered, I love you, John, for a long time now. I didn't answer, feeling torn by conflicting emotions. On one hand, I felt incredible happiness and bliss next to her. My body craved new caresses and a repetition of what had happened, but on the other hand, I was tormented by guilt towards my wife. How could I do this to Emily, cheat on her with her own mother? What would people say if they found out? Carol apparently sensed my tension. John, darling, don't torture yourself. What happened, happened. I know it's not easy, but think about us, about your feelings. She took my face in her hands and kissed me gently, and I realized I was lost. I had fallen in love with my own mother-in-law like a complete idiot, but there was no turning back, and to be honest, I didn't want to. With Carol, I felt something I hadn't experienced with Emily for a long time. So I cowardly decided to put all doubts out of my mind for a while and just enjoy what was happening between us. We continued to meet secretly with Carol, hiding from everyone. Every time Emily went to work, Carol would rush to me. We gave ourselves completely to passion, forgetting about everything in the world. Each meeting was like the last. Carol confessed her love to me, whispered sweet nothings, showered me with hot kisses, and I felt more and more that I was losing my head over this woman. At the same time, I felt a monstrous sense of guilt towards my wife. Emily didn't suspect anything, continuing to be completely absorbed in her work. Sometimes she would look at me in surprise and ask, John, what's wrong with you lately? You're not yourself. You're always somewhere else. Everything's fine, dear. Just tired from the courses, I would mumble in response and look away, afraid of giving myself away. One evening, when Emily and I were having dinner at home, she suddenly said, You know, I think Mom has a man. Lately, she's not herself. It's like she's gotten younger and blossomed. She's always daydreaming and constantly on her phone. I choked in surprise and started coughing. What makes you think that? I asked, trying to hide my anxiety. Just think about it. She hasn't received any attention for a long time, and now she's just glowing with happiness. What do you think? Could she be having an affair? Emily said thoughtfully. I felt a chill inside. Emily had no idea how close she was to the truth. What if she finds out about everything? What will happen then? It took enormous effort to maintain a calm appearance and not betray my anxiety. Well, maybe Carol's just in a good mood lately. You should be happy for your mom. I tried to joke in response, but deep down, I was plagued by dark premonitions. Something told me that our secret with Carol would soon be revealed, and then an unenviable fate awaits us. The denouement came on one fateful Sunday. Carol came to me as usual when Emily went out on business. Absorbed in each other, having lost track of time, we didn't notice Emily appear in the doorway with shopping bags in her hands. Our intimate seclusion was suddenly and unceremoniously interrupted. Seeing the scene before her, Emily froze in place, dropping the bags from her suddenly weakened hands. What the hell is going on here? She screamed in an inhuman voice. Carol and I immediately jumped up, trying to cover our nakedness. My heart was racing wildly, pounding in my temples. How embarrassing and awkward it was to be caught in such a situation. Emily, I'll explain everything, I started to mumble. Shut up, my wife screeched. How could you? With my mother, you beast! She flew at me and slapped me. Surprised and hurt, I staggered. Carol tried to calm her daughter down. Emily, listen, it just happened. John and I love each other. Try to understand us. But Emily didn't want to hear anything. She was pacing around the kitchen, grabbing either a frying pan or a knife, and screaming, spitting, You're both scum! Traitors! How could you do this to me? Behind my back! Then, calming down a bit, my wife turned to me and hissed, Get out! I can't stand to look at you! You can go to your whore! Carol choked with indignation. Emily, how dare you insult me! Shut up, Mom! You too! Get out of my house! There was nothing to do. Carol and I quickly got dressed and retreated under Emily's shouts and curses. Already on the street, recovering from the initial shock, Carol said, I'm sorry, John. I didn't want it to turn out like this. But I love you and want to be with you, no matter what. I hugged her, trying to comfort her. My soul was in complete disarray. Part of me understood that it would be right to leave Emily and start a new life with Carol. After all, it was to her that my heart and body were drawn. But another part scolded me for betrayal, for treating my wife so despicably. What are we going to do now?
Carol asked, looking into my eyes. I don't even know. I guess we need to find a place to stay first. Emily is unlikely to let us back in. That evening we rented a hotel room, not knowing what awaited us in the morning. We talked all night, making plans for the future and thinking about what to do next. Carol suggested, maybe we should go somewhere, start a new life in another city where no one knows us. We'll live for ourselves. Her words sounded very tempting. The prospect of running away from everyone and dedicating myself to the woman I love seemed so desirable. But what about work, obligations, friends? It wasn't easy to abandon everything at once. In the morning, I received a text message from Emily. I'm filing for divorce. You can collect your things. Well, it seems my married life has completely collapsed. I don't know if I'll ever be able to atone for my guilt towards my wife. Carol and I had a lot to discuss and decide. A couple of days later, we were sitting on the ocean shore, admiring the sunset and holding hands. Carol snuggled up to me and whispered, I don't regret anything, John. Yes, it will be difficult for us. People will judge. My daughter will hate us. But the main thing is that we have each other. My love for you is stronger than anything. I kissed her salt-sprayed lips. Despite everything that had happened, I felt surprisingly calm in my soul, as if I had found what I had been missing all these years. Passion, love, understanding. And even if the whole world is against us, we now have a chance to be happy. That's my story, in many ways shameful and ugly. But I wanted to be completely honest. Perhaps someone will condemn me for cheating. Someone might say that treating my wife like this is despicable. I don't justify myself either. But in this situation, it seems there are no right or wrong. Circumstances just aligned this way. Feelings flared up that I was powerless against. Now Carol and I are trying to build a life together. Despite all the difficulties and sideways glances, I hope that someday Emily will be able to forgive me. I still wish her only the best, but I have tied my fate to Carol, and I will love her until the end of my days, no matter what anyone says. That's my confession, friends. Let everyone draw their own conclusions. I just wanted to be honest and share my most intimate story. Thank you to everyone who listened. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.